Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we examine how retailers are winning by developing an informed relationship with their customers, a better understanding of what their customers actually want, and how the best are using data and analytics to deliver increased sales. In this episode, we'll delve into my most loved topic, the realm of shopper behavior. Here we will discover how data and analytics unveil valuable insights into customer purchase patterns, preferences, and segmentation. All of this enables retailers to personalize experiences, optimize strategies, and drive for that precious business growth. So join me as we take a deep dive into the world of retail analytics and discover how it's helping retailers to stay ahead of the game in today's ever-changing marketplace. There's not a brand out there, not a business out there that isn't collecting data, right? So the challenge is saying, well, what do you do with that data when you collect it? For me, what it allows us to do is, as a brand and business is that we take that data and we compare it against our personas, understanding the current state of play, understanding their current um, purchasing patterns. And then what that does is it gives us some guidance as to what is actually happening in the marketplace, either from an online or offline perspective. So what it really ultimately allows us to do is to say, are we in line with our current consumer and target market? Or are there things that we need to adjust? But also it opens up those opportunities for us to build, um, reinvent or change some of the things that we're doing. So it's a, it's a pretty valuable tool, but it's knowing what to do with that data. Seeing the behavior buying patterns and the preferences that customers are looking for, it can help provide insights in a few different ways. It really allows you at the end of the day to personalize that experience. That might be through things such as making their purchase process much more frictionless and seamless. It might be through a cross-sell opportunity to show them other products that might be of interest based on what other folks have also purchased. It could be engaging those customers that might have gone quiet for a while. And you can use predictive analytics to view that data and determine the likelihood of their next purchase and then be able to market a promotion or a discount to them to encourage them to come back and be a loyal customer. The retailers that are excelling take data out of silos and pull it together in a more holistic view of the consumer that not only informs their strategies, but helps their brand partners and marketing partners and their retail media business really make more informed decisions on where to engage the consumer, how to engage them and all, how to ultimately solve them in a way that makes them want to make a purchase. We want to make sure that we're providing as relevant a experience as we possibly can for each and every customer, making sure that we're tailoring using those preferences um, and making sure that we're being very strategic about the ways that we interact with that loyal base of customers in general and, and really making sure that we're doing some due diligence on how to talk to the customer before we actually kind of just jump in and, and do some uh, marketing and CRM tactics. Marketing departments are leveraging data in two ways. They're leveraging it to try to drive customer behavior internally in their stores. So get people to come in more frequently, spend more, buy more, um, personalize the experience so it's relevant um, to them and, and, and they enjoy the experience. But they also are looking to target these customers externally. So leveraging third-party data, maybe to market to them out in the online world, on Facebook, on TikTok, or wherever it might be, through banner ads. We think a lot about the ways in which the best customers have the messiest data. Very often, your VIPs are engaging with you across a multitude of channels, right? That's browse, but it's also in-store. It perhaps is at a pop-up you held. It's perhaps a loyalty sign-up. If those data sources are all siloed, then it's really hard for us to understand, number one, are they actually a VIP? And number two, you know, what is it they prefer? What is it that they want from you as a brand? If we don't have all those things in one place, we can't really serve that person the best possible way. And it really is a, a shame to think of all those people who are super loyal to you and aren't being served in like a personalized, high expectation kind of fashion. If you combine third party data sources such as demographic info, credit info, addresses, that can help to determine a persona. Is it a college student? Is it a new parent? Is it a soccer mom? There's different merchants, you know, look at different personas as important for them to, to target 
these profiles are then used to determine what offers uh, to target to those customers. So assuming this is a college student, now you can determine what bucket they fall into and what personalized offers you can provide to them. An organization's ability to see the full view of the customer is really key to being able to effectively activate on those insights. Bringing in data from your CRM, social media, loyalty programs, lead capture, digital advertising, all of those tools allows you to improve that customer's experience as you're able to better cater to them, right? You get the ability to show them that you understand them and they feel like they know you. So building trust with your customers through that data is really what it means when we talk about a personalized and relevant experience for those customers. You're making it easy to do business with. So that personalization, of course, creates that trust and it gives those customers a reason to stay committed to the experience and working with your brand. We have to kind of build this ecosystem now that says forget about where they're purchasing from, just make sure that they can. The great thing about analytics and data that is being provided against platforms like social media and Shopify, it means that you can start getting an understanding of what are those ads that are working, right? What are those things that are actually creating retention and engagement and then building on those? But you've just got to be mindful that you stay firmly focused on who is your consumer. So it allows you to kind of be consumer centric and challenge, are we still talking to the same consumer or the consumer that we want? But then also how do we optimize in creating more um, brand awareness, engagement and following from a social media perspective? For as far into the digital age as we are, how we leverage collectively both retailers and consumer brands, personalization technology to really present consumers with products uh, that we know will be of interest to them still feels a little early days that we haven't used all of the inputs like social media activity as well as browse and buy behavior on the website to its full capability just yet. And even though personalization has been around a while and we all see examples of it in our daily lives and our own shopping experiences, we're not even close to, I think, the full potential of that technology to not make a better shopping experience for the consumer, but a more productive engagement if you're the retailer or if you're a consumer brand. It's so important that once we have customers' data in our hands, that we're using it intelligently and there's pressure to make sure that interactions with your brand are, you know, personalized, tailored, that they're relevant and make sense. And then I think in general, the first party data space is really going to be at the forefront of what matters to marketers and lots of companies coming up. As we see changes to privacy and as we see changes to the cookie uh, online, there's plenty of ways in which that third party indication or even second party indication of information is not always as reliable as you'd like it to be. And so the data that you can collect on your customers is more and more valuable. We wanna make sure that we're kind of using it wherever we can. I think the primary issue that we're gonna see over the next three to five years is going to be finding the correct data and analytics to actually derive those insights, the ability to personalize the experience for the customers, and then find ways that they can actually communicate with the customers. When you think about what you're looking to personalize or improve in that customer journey, that's really the first step. Look at that and say, what data do we need to collect that's going to support that experience? Use that insight to then kind of reverse engineer, right? How you want to leverage that data to ultimately help achieve your goals of improvement. And my advice is to start small. You do not need to jump into the deep end with collecting large volumes of data. Start with just one endpoint and work your way back. In our next episode, as part of the modern retail experience, we'll embark on a captivating journey exploring the evolution of in-store experiences in retail. To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so you're first in line to watch the latest episodes. I've been your host, Andrew Smith. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Data Drivers.